All right. So thank you everybody for joining us again for the study abroad 101 presentation. This presentation is going to go over the steps to studying abroad at E-Town uh, and hopefully address any questions that you have. Uh, again, feel free to ask them at the end. All right. My name is Megan Bell. I am the study abroad advisor here. Uh, I'm also the international student advisor as well. Um, so I'm working with students coming to the US as well as leaving. Uh, I'm also an E-Town alum. So I've been sitting in your shoes before thinking about studying abroad and trying to decide if this was something I wanted to consider. Uh, I majored in communications and minored in professional writing, ultimately ended up spending the spring of my junior year abroad in Cheltenham, England um, for the full semester. And then while I was abroad, I had the chance to travel around. We went to Ireland, the Netherlands, the Czech Republic, Italy, and Greece. And then since graduating, I've had the chance to uh, go to Mexico and Ecuador through working in international education. And then I did personally travel to Canada too. Um, so if at any point my slides aren't advancing, if somebody could just give me, give me a heads up, I'd appreciate that. But enough about me. Um, I'm going to go over the steps of studying abroad here. So this is an overview, and then we're going to talk about each one in a little bit more, a little bit more detail. Um, but you can kind of get a snapshot here of the overall seven, seven or so steps of studying abroad. Like I said, we're going to go step by step. But these are all pictures throughout the presentation of students that have recently studied abroad at Etown um, in a variety, in a variety of different places. So hopefully that'll be inspiring as well. So the first step here is to think about why you want to go abroad. So what do you hope to get out of this experience? You know, when you, when you see yourself abroad, where do you basically daydream about going? You know, where do you wanna go on vacation versus where might you wanna study? Like what's gonna be somewhere easy that you can go and visit as a tourist, maybe in the future, somewhere maybe you've already been. Um, where do you wanna live and study for an extended period of time? Um, where is gonna potentially be a little bit harder for you to travel to in the future? Um, you know, have you traveled somewhere else? Are you anxious to return to that place? Do you want to go somewhere new? Um, just kind of thinking through those things as well as then the more logistic things like what courses do you need to take? Like, have you talked to um, your academic advisor to know if there's certain core courses that you can take abroad or maybe they're open to allowing certain major courses to come back as well. So just trying to think through when you might want to go, what courses you might need to take for that time frame to work. Um, all of that kind of comes into this initial just why do you want to go abroad? What might it look like perspective? Um, just thinking about also how long you want to go. So we have programs that are short as one week. We've got programs that are full academic year and pretty much any length in between. So a couple weeks, couple months, full semester. Kind of thinking about what you're comfortable with, with how long you're going to be abroad um, and also time of year that you wanna go and, and, and then maybe any extracurriculars or athletics that you wanna avoid. Just trying to think through all of that. Uh, and then when you are abroad, there are opportunities to get involved in things beyond your courses. So there's clubs, there's volunteer opportunities, there's internships, there's research. Is there something really specific that you envision yourself wanting to do abroad uh, that we could potentially find in a study abroad program? So. Thinking through that, that might help us narrow down your locations or your program lengths. Uh, and the last part here is just think, think about your post-graduation plans. Uh, it might be a little, feel a little early to be thinking about that. I think some of you are potentially incoming students. So uh, you might not be thinking about what your post-graduation plans are, but if you wanna go uh, on to graduate school, you know, study abroad looks really good on your resume. Um, it looks really good for future employers as well, because less than 10% of U.S. undergraduate students study abroad. Uh, so you are going to stand out to future employers as somebody who's willing to take risks, go outside their comfort zone, um, you know, have a multicultural understanding, work with people that are different than themselves. So there's a lot of professional as well as personal benefits of studying abroad. But then also thinking about if you might be interested in maybe a prestigious scholarship or fellowship opportunity, such as uh, the Peace Corps or the Fulbright, um, maybe you want to teach English abroad, maybe you want to do research abroad. So kind of thinking through where you might want to um, study abroad as an undergraduate student to build your resume for those postgraduate opportunities. So a little bit more forward planning on that one, but um, something to keep in mind as you're looking at destinations and different types of programs. So that is step number one. 
Step number two is meeting with your academic advisor. So again, if you are a first year student that first semester, you have your first year seminar advisor, definitely letting them know that you're thinking about studying abroad. But ultimately, once you actually do get assigned an advisor within your major, uh, talking to them too to see when the major recommends that you study abroad, um, there might be a specific semester that works out better for your schedule. Uh, that they recommend or certain programs that they recommend. So definitely chatting with your academic advisor. If you are a first year student and you're anxious to figure out what works for your major, if you're taking a course your first semester with a professor in your intended department, definitely chat with them. Uh, let them know you're thinking about it and gain their initial thoughts on it. Um, you know, usually junior year, if you want to do a semester is kind of the sweet spot, but each major is a little bit, a little bit different, like engineering, for example, can go second semester, sophomore year, or if you want to do a, for, um, one of those summer programs, you can actually go as early as between your first and your second year as well. So there's lots of different time frames that you can make it work, but the first step is talking to your academic advisor, see what time frame works. From your major's perspective and then also what courses that they would recommend that you save for abroad. Um, there are major and minor courses that some departments are willing to transfer in um, from a university abroad, but some of them they definitely want you to take on campus. Or there are some courses that are only offered in you know, the fall semester or they're only offered in the spring every other year. So you want to be mindful of that when building out when building out your four years uh, at E-Town. So if nothing else, building out your schedule for the four years at E-Town is helpful from a course registration perspective so that every semester you know what you need to sign up for and how to stay on track for graduation. But then it also helps you figure out when is the best time for you to study abroad too so that um, we have a time frame in mind and, and can plan accordingly. So that is step number two. Step number three is meeting with me, the study abroad advisor. Um, so we'll talk through all these details in a little bit you know a little bit more uh context specific to you we'll look at program options we'll answer any questions we'll dive deeper into finances fill out some budget sheets uh all of that uh, have you feeling confident in moving forward and study abroad uh academically personally financially uh and we'll do that in a one-on-one -on -one meeting so i typically do accept appointments from 2 to 4 p.m uh as my schedule permits each weekday um, but you may also be able to schedule another meeting. So you can feel free to reach out to me via email um, to set up a meeting or there is an online scheduler. Um, and my personal email is there as well as the study abroad at etown.edu email address. <clears throat> so we are located in NICARI. We are just around the corner from ITS. Um, so you're also welcome to stop by during business hours as well. And step number four is decide where you actually want to go. So again, no pressure from the beginning to figure out where you want to go. We can definitely have this be part of the conversation. You can say, I'm this, you know, I'm this major, I'm looking for these courses or these core courses. I want to go to this region of the world. Where would you recommend? Or some students come in and say, like, I know I definitely want to go to New Zealand. Like, what are my program options in New Zealand? Um, so it's kind of up to you, but if you want to and you um, feel like you need to explore program options a little bit further, keeping in mind that we do have you know, 60 different semester options and unlimited summer programs, uh, you can complete our program matching quiz. So we have an online program matching quiz that there's a big button on our homepage that you can uh, click on to take that quiz. It'll ask you a whole bunch of questions about your interest in studying abroad, length of time, location, subjects, all of that. And then based off of our pre-approved uh, or recommended programs, you'll get a list of, of suggested uh, opportunities to check out. You can also check out our social media platforms, which includes our Instagram account, as well as our YouTube channel, which has a playlist specific for each of our semester programs. Uh, we do also have a blog where some past students have written some articles about their study abroad experience. And then last year we launched uh, the E-Town Abroad podcast, which has some interviews. Uh, from some recent study abroad students and even uh, an alum from the 1950s who studied abroad. Uh, so definitely check that out. We do also do events throughout the year. Um, we are planning on resuming those events this academic year, including our big study abroad fair in the fall semester. Um, so that's a great opportunity for you to come and learn a little bit more about the program options, uh, meet uh, representatives from the different providers that we work with, the different companies that are available, as well as meet professors who lead faculty-led programs. Uh, and then get just general information from the study abroad office. Uh, we also encourage you to ask around. You know, there's a lot of students on campus that have studied abroad in the past that are willing to, more than willing to talk about their study abroad experience. 
Um, so definitely connecting with those upperclassmen within your major, maybe your peer mentors, um, the outreach coordinators or the student workers within the study abroad office, uh, just trying to gain some perspective on where they went, why they recommend it, what you might want to consider as well. Um, <clears throat> and then also obviously like I'm happy to be a resource as well. Um, you can do some general research on your own too with just researching the city, country, or program that you're interested in through a simple, simple Google search. Um, when you're looking at program pages, which are all linked from the Study Abroad website, which is with an eTown site, I'll show that to you later, or the URLs on the bottom of all of these slides, um, you can find course listings, uh, see which programs have courses that are going to align with your academic interests. Uh, maybe some courses that are beyond those that are offered at E-Town so that you can take some classes to explore maybe a subject that we don't have in E-Town or just see, you know, definitely is this the route that I want to go with my career uh, by taking a course in, in another country on the topic. You can also check out the excursions. I know those are really popular for students. Those are the trips that are often included in many of our programs, uh, included in the program fee for no additional cost. So a lot of times students will get excited about a certain trip that's included in the program. Uh, so that will help them narrow down their location options as well. You'll want to look at the housing. Uh, all of our programs have housing arrangements set up for you, but um, some of them have predetermined, you know, everybody that goes on this program lives in an apartment or a dorm. Um, some of them are host family arrangements. Um, so if you feel very strongly one way or the other and what type of housing you'd like to be in, you'll definitely want to look at that and your program options as well. Typically, the host families are available more on our language immersion programs, um, but it's definitely something that you want to consider. There might be an apartment or a dorm if you'd be more comfortable in that setting, but it's ultimately up to you and something that we can look in when uh, we're weighing your options. You also want to look at program dates um, to see how they might align with your personal schedule. Um, they Program dates align with the university abroad and, and their schedule doesn't necessarily align with E-Town semester dates. So with that in mind, um, our Pacific programs, for example, you know, Australia, New Zealand, Fiji, their academic calendar is contained to a, an actual year calendar. So it runs February to November. Um, so our spring semester is their first semester and it runs spring, um, the spring semester runs February to June and then our fall semester runs June or July to November. So it's definitely very different than a semester at E-Town. So just making sure that you're aware of the dates up front as you're looking at programs and thinking about how it might impact, uh, you know, summer plans, winter break plans, you know, employment opportunities during those time frames, uh, and just making sure that you're avoiding any personal events too. If you know of a sibling's wedding coming up or something like that, you just want to be mindful of dates as, as you're reviewing program options too. So all things to consider, all things I'm happy to help with, but something to get you thinking a little bit more right now. So you might be asking yourself, where can I actually study abroad? This all sounds interesting, but where can I go? So this is a list of the countries that we have on our affiliated, which is essentially our pre-approved list of semester program options. Um, I do have it broken down into different regions of the world. Uh, if you go on our website, again, you can find actual links to the specific programs, as well as information about the cities and the universities that we're based in. In each of these locations, well, we have at least one program uh, in each of the countries listed. Uh, you will notice we do have a Washington DC program. That is our one domestic option. A lot of times students don't necessarily think of uh, a, a DC option when thinking of study abroad. So I do like to, to call attention to that one. It's a full-time internship program uh, where you're actually working in an internship in our nation's capital Monday through Thursday and then uh, participating in some professional development opportunities and evening courses during the other time. So Definitely lots of opportunities, uh, lots of different places that you can go. So again, those program matching quizzes, talking to people, uh, attending our events, chatting with me will help kind of narrow down this extensive list a little bit further. And then if you want to do, you know, a summer break program or a winter break program, there's really unlimited options. And we do have some links to some companies to check out on our website. We don't have a predefined list for summer or winter programs just because of how finances work out, which will be on a future slide here. Um, but we do like to highlight specifically the E-Town faculty-led programs where it's actually a program that an E-Town professor is leading. Uh, these are typically May term programs. So kind of right after the spring semester ends, 
you go abroad uh, with your class, you know, that's either, it's either a spring course that continues into May term or it's a course that's just during the May term timeframe, but you travel with your class. So just other E-Town students and you're abroad for one to three weeks. Um, so most of these are May term programs. Like I said, the entrepreneurship in, in Prague program is our one spring break option. So that one would be shorter, but usually these are programs that are one to three weeks in length. Uh, a lot of the programs are offered every year. Some of them are offered every other year. So you'd have at least two chances as an E-Town student to participate in these programs. The programs are open to students from all majors with the exception of the Vietnam program, which we do prioritize our occupational therapy and social work students for that program. But otherwise you're welcome to participate in any of these programs even if it's not a professor that you've ever had before or somebody in your department, you're welcome to, to join those programs. So again, if you go on our website and just search for study abroad with an E-Town site, you'll find it. Um, there's a faculty-led program page with more details about each of these programs, as well as when we hope to, to run the program next. Um, again, you will see we do have a Washington DC program option within faculty-led. So. Definitely lots of opportunities, you know, if you wanted to study abroad, maybe more than once, but you weren't sure about studying abroad initially, you could start off by trying one of these shorter programs uh, with a group of familiar faces and then potentially go on to do a semester abroad. Or you could just choose from the beginning to do a semester and a faculty led program two faculty led programs. There's really any variety of combinations that you can do if if you're interested in studying abroad more than once. Um, we did recently have a student that studied abroad four times <laughs> during her time at E-Town. So if you want to study abroad any length of time, as many times as you want to, there's a will, there's a way, and we'll, we'll make it work for you. So the next step is finances, which I know is usually a big question for everybody. So this is a kind of an overview of the, the study abroad finance, financial process. Like I said, we do have budget sheets that I'm happy to fill out with you during an advising meeting to kind of go in a little bit more nitty gritty detail, but this gives you a nice uh, snapshot overview. So if you wanna go on a semester program, I just showed you that list a few slides ago of our affiliated options, basically our pre-approved programs. As long as you pick from one of those programs, and like I said, there's about 60 different options, so I'm confident we can find something that works for you. Um, in most cases, your tuition is going to be exactly the same as it is for a semester at E-Town. So whatever you pay to E-Town, including merit-based scholarships, financial aid, all of that stays exactly the same. You get the bill from E-Town as if you were coming back to campus that semester, you pay it like normal E-Town will pay your study abroad program uh, for tuition. So you don't have to worry about that. We did just recently make an update to our financial model and there now are a few select programs that do require an additional preferred program fee. Well, on top of the tu tuition fee, it's definitely not a requirement. Majority of our programs are only tuition only category. Um, but if you are interested and personally want to choose one of these programs uh, with the preferred program fee, uh, we can look at those options as well. I've got a, a screenshot on the next slide here of where you can find some more information about that. But that preferred program fee again is paid to E-Town uh, and it's a thousand to $4,000. So my next slide goes into a little bit more detail about this, this new change. Uh, regardless of which program you pick, you uh, don't pay E-Town for room and board because obviously you're not going to be living on campus uh, the semester that you're studying abroad. So instead, you're going to pay the company, uh, the study abroad provider, or the school that you're studying abroad with for your room and board expenses. So again, not paying E-Town anything because you're not eating or living on campus. You're just paying the company or school abroad um, for your housing. So that does the cost does fluctuate based on the program that you're going on. It could be cheaper than E-Town, could be right around the same cost, could be a little bit more. It really does depend on the program um, and the type of housing that you're in, whether it's apartment or dorm or host family. It also depends on the cost of living in the country that you're going to, the length of the program, all of that. So uh, we can, again, look at that when we fill out the budget sheet, I can give you an idea of how much housing is going to cost on, on your preferred program. Uh, and if there's a price point that you'd rather stay in, we can also narrow down that list of 60 different programs based off of uh, programs, maybe that the housing is cheaper than you tell. Uh, the last part here is that there is a $250 study abroad fee that's required for all ETown study abroad students. It basically covers the extra um, extra support that you get through the study abroad process. So it's uh, the extra support you get from a study abroad office, financial aid, business office, registration records, all of that. 
the different uh, offices and people that help make this happen. So that's what the study abroad fee is for. That is separate than the preferred program fee. Then if you do want to study abroad for a winter or a summer program, which does include those E-Town faculty led programs, since these programs are occurring outside the academic year, you are responsible for the full cost of the program, uh, just because your financial aid is not typically in play during this time frame. There are a few exceptions to that. For example, if you end up earning more than six credits, you know, taking more than two courses typically uh, during, say, a summer program, then you'd be considered a part-time student, and then we could potentially apply for some financial aid. Um, but there, there are a few additional exceptions that we can talk to the financial aid about. Uh, but that's the basic overview is that you usually pay for the full cost of those shorter programs. Uh, again, there is a study abroad fee, but we don't require that for the E-Town faculty led programs or our own internal programs. We don't have, we don't have that fee. Uh, so then the italics here is that if you are an international student joining us today or you have tuition exchange or tuition remission, it is a slightly different conversation about how you will finance study abroad than what I just went over. So definitely let me know if that's the case for you and we can talk about it further based off my initial understanding of it. And then I'll likely connect you with the financial aid office to talk about your specifics a little bit further. Uh, like I said, there are budget sheets that are available for each program that I'm happy to share with you to kind of talk through your specific financial needs based off your intended program or programs a little bit further. Usually if students can give me, you know, top three or less choices, I can give them budget sheets. Um, but then you can also use that information while talking to financial aid about any questions that you have uh, about your specific financial aid package applying to study abroad. That's an overview. Hopefully that all makes sense. Again, I can take questions at the end. But then there is the preferred program fee that I was talking about that's new. Um, so I just wanted to expand upon that a little bit further just because it is, is a newer uh, addition to the portfolio here. Um, so the preferred program fee is only required for specific semester programs. So again, majority of our programs are available for just E-Town tuition. Uh, if you're required to study abroad for your major, say your modern language or international business, uh, you will find a program that works for your major on the tuition only category. Um, most countries are either in the tuition only category, the tuition plus the $1,000 preferred program fee. The only two countries that aren't in that list uh, at this point are Ireland and Morocco, and they're both on the tuition plus $2,000 category. So you can go to any other country for either tuition or tuition plus $1,000. Um, you're going to pay this preferred program fee at the same time as your E-Town tuition. You will pay it to E-Town. Um, but you can't necessarily, your financial aid package isn't going to be modified with this additional fee in mind, um, but you can work with the financial aid office to request additional loans if you'd like some financial support to cover that, to cover that extra fee. Um, again, students are not required to attend a program with a preferred program fee. You will find options. Majority of the program options are on tuition only, um, so you should you should be good to go there in that sense, but there are a few countries that that start out in the tuition plus a thousand dollar category. So you can check that out on our website a little bit further. There's also an advising handout that I can um, direct you to that has a nice list of where you can find them. But um, definitely not a requirement, just something I wanted to explain since it is a newer newer process here. All right. So if you're again if you're on the study abroad offices website and you go to our list of semester programs, you'll see these different drop down menus. Um, if you expand each of these categories, you'll see the list of programs that fall into that category by region of the world. Um, so again, most of them are going to be under ETOM tuition only, but if you don't see what you're looking for there, you can expand the other ones to, to see a little bit further. Um, there is a program that is ETOM tuition plus ETOM room and board plus $2,000, so you pay ETOM for everything as if you were coming back to campus for that semester plus an additional $2,000. Um, just because that program, it's in England um, and it's all inclusive. It actually does include housing and a meal plan, whereas most other programs, uh, they just include housing and then you're usually cooking for yourself or going out to eat as you're able to. So that's just how that program is, is bundled. That's why uh, the fees are a little bit different, but it's nice in that sense that you know you're paying literally exactly what you pay to go to E-Town, um, just plus that extra $2,000 now. 
keeping in mind when you're reviewing finances that you do need to budget for some extra expenses, such as if you need a passport, if you need a visa, your airfare is not included in your program fees, any personal travel. So we definitely, that's where those budget sheets come in handy to get an idea of what your overall expenses are. Um, but this gives you an idea of what your initial tuition expenses are gonna be. So again, hopefully that makes sense. Happy to answer any questions. The other part about finances is study abroad scholarships. So we do have um, a whole webpage dedicated to scholarship opportunities. There are more than 50 different opportunities on there. So you can go on and kind of self-identify what works for you, um, what you're eligible for, when you can apply, all of that. But I just want to point out a couple of the, the bigger ones, a couple that we provide some additional support for in our office. Um, so eTown does offer study abroad scholarships. We offer 10 $1,000 scholarships throughout the year. Um, it's two different times that we're collecting applications. Um, so five $1,000 scholarships at each, at each point. These are four different categories. Um, we give one diversity abroad scholarship, one first generation scholarship, one STEM scholarship, and two merit scholarships uh, during each application cycle. But we actually just recently changed our application deadlines to align with the Gilman scholarships. So you have two opportunities to apply. So say, for example, you want to go abroad in fall of 2022, you could apply now um, in time for our October deadline, or you can apply again uh, in time for our March deadline. So with that in mind, you know, if you don't get it the first time, then you have a second chance to apply. But if you do get it the first time, then you know that you have the funding in advance and maybe you can make a more informed decision of whether or not you can financially afford to study abroad with that information. Um, so scholarships are open to any program, any length of time. Definitely check that out to, to learn a little bit more. Then we do promote different external opportunities such as the Gilman Scholarship. This is a scholarship of up to $5,000. Um, they can give you any amount under that, but it, the maximum award is 5,000. You do need to be a federal Pell Grant recipient in order to apply for this award. So if you don't know if you receive that now, um, talk to your financial aid advisor, talk to your parents, um, figure out if you're eligible, it's worth it, I promise, because you could get up to $5,000. Um, again, they have the two deadlines now, so you have two chances to apply. You can't win both times, but again, if you don't win the first time, then you can win the second time. And then the other one I like to mention here is the Critical Language Scholarship. Um, this is actually an, an actual program, so it's an all-expense-paid summer program where you're focused on learning one of these languages. Um, so you do have to be very much interested in learning one of these languages. Some of them do have prerequisites in that you've studied the language previously. Uh, some of them are for true beginner status, but you need to show that you're dedicated to learning the language because it's an intensive language program. Uh, and then you need to show that you have intentions of using the language when you return from studying abroad. So it is very competitive as is the Gilman Scholarship. So with that, we do offer support services through the application process. Happy to read through essay drafts, gives you, give you some feedback. I've served as a reviewer on, for both of these scholarships. So I have a little bit of insight of specifically what they're looking for for a winning, for a winning application. So those are two opportunities we like to mention. Uh, then we'll get back to our steps here. So that was step number five, all of that about finances. And now the last two steps here is that you actually complete your eTown study abroad application and then you complete your program application. So the eTown study abroad application, I've included a snapshot here of what it entails um, because it's honestly, it's really simple. Like the initial application you could easily do tonight if you wanted to, um, and we could accept you usually within a week or so. Uh, waiting on the Dean of Students approval usually takes a couple of days, but the initial application is just profile information. We ask for two emergency contacts. We asked for two essays, one just generally, how did you get to this point? What made you think about study abroad? There's no word count for that essay. I'm just curious how you got to this point of pursuing study abroad. Have you always wanted to travel? Did a family member travel that inspired you? You know, how did you get here basically? And then the second essay, there is a word count. It's only 300 to 500 words, but it's why did you choose your intended program? You know, what, what made you pick this program? And I'm looking specifically for how it relates to you individually. I don't necessarily want you to regurgitate what's on their website about all the program features. Uh, I'm familiar with the program, so I wanna know how it relates directly to you. Uh, then the next part is that we ask how, um, what your transcript looks like so that you can uh, download an unofficial copy of your transcript from JWeb. And then, like I said, we do reach out to the Dean of Students and just make sure you don't have any academic or behavioral issues 
um, that would prevent you from going abroad. Ultimately, we want you to succeed academically uh, while you're abroad, and we also want you to be a good representation of the college. So that's what we're looking for with, with that approval. Um, then once you are approved by the college to study abroad, and I, I should say that in terms of eligibility requirements, our eligibility requirement is just that you have a 2.6 overall GPA. If you don't, let me know and we can still have a conversation about that. Um, we just want to make sure again that you're going to succeed academically while you're abroad. And again, that there's nothing scary written on the deed of student's approval. Usually those are the two main things that we're looking for in order to determine if the college will approve you to study abroad. But then once you are approved to study abroad, then there are a few post approved materials that we want where it gets into a little bit more of the nitty gritty details and the program specific details. So we fill out a course approval form so that we know what courses you're planning on taking abroad and you know how they're gonna transfer back before you even leave. Um, so you know that you're gonna stay on track for graduation and you know this course is gonna fulfill this core requirement or this major requirement. Uh, you also know how many credits it's gonna transfer back for each class. Uh, we have study abroad policies and our study abroad agreement that you read through and sign. We have you fill out a finance form where that budget sheet that I mentioned comes into play. So again, you're sharing that budget sheet with the financial aid office and the business office just to make sure everybody's on the same page about what your study abroad expenses are and that you're not surprised later by any hidden fees. Uh, you pay that study abroad fee. Uh, you upload your passport information. You can potentially answer some questions about just health and well-being. Uh, and then you do upload your flight itineraries before you actually depart. So that's kind of a snapshot of what the application looks like. We do have two deadlines. Um, we have the October 15th deadline and the March 15th deadline. So basically the semester before you want to study abroad is usually when your application is due, but some programs like faculty led programs might have their own deadlines. So keep that in mind and, and their price us uh, application process might look a little different than this one, but this is the overall semester, summer, general study abroad application. And when you're ready to actually start it, if you again, if you're on our homepage of the study abroad site, you can click on this big apply now button. And that's where you'll find links to specific applications by term, or like I mentioned earlier, there's that link for the program, program matching quiz or, or the scheduling a meeting option as well. All right, so then the last step is actually applying to your intended program. So we encourage students to wait until they're approved by ETown to actually apply for their program. Um, most of our programs do require a application fee and oftentimes it's non-refundable. So we wouldn't want you to pay uh, an application fee of you know, 90 to $150 and then ultimately not be approved by ETown to study abroad. So do your ETown application, get approved, then go on to do your program application. Um, you're going to actually apply for your intended program through the company that's offering the program or the school that's offering the program. So you'll need to go specifically to their website and click on their apply now button to start the application. I know that uh, students often find programs through our ma program matching quiz and then they try and apply that way. Um, I know it's a little bit misleading, but you're actually not applying for your program through our application system. You're going to apply for the program through the company's website. So the example is listed here that if you're going to Thailand, for example, with CIS Abroad, you would go to CIS Abroad's website and click on their Apply Now button and start the application there. Um, <clears throat> like I said, don't start your application until you're definitely definitely approved by E-Town, um, just so you don't pay any application fees that aren't necessary because you end up switching it to a different program or you don't study abroad for some reason. So just something to mention there. With that said, that's all I have to say. I know I've been talking for a while and I went over the time a little bit, um, but here's my contact information. Feel free to reach out, feel free to schedule a meeting. It's never too early. You can check out our Instagram account. We're at Etown Abroad. It's kind of a fun way to see some pictures like this. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording now. And then if you have any questions, uh, you can feel free to unmute yourself uh, or write them in the chat box. So thank you everybody for being here.